Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our midweek service of morning prayer. My name is Sue, for those who don't know me, and later on, Katie, our vicar, will be bringing you God's word. We'll be using our green books, as usual. I think you all know by now, you can follow through in the books, or the words are so familiar, just listen and say the amens and the responses as you know them. Let's have a moment's quiet before we start our service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Now is our time to say sorry, to repent for things we've done wrong, things perhaps we haven't done that we should have done. Just leave these with the Lord. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ, your light, ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and this day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We come to our reading section of the service. Our first is our psalm. And today we are reading from Psalm 119. I think it's the longest psalm in the book. We're starting at verse 153 and going on to the end. If you want to find that in your Bible, it's right about in the middle of the Bible. I'll just give you a moment to find that. So it's Psalm 119, verses 153 to the end. Look on my suffering and deliver me, for I have not forgotten your law. Defend my cause and redeem me. Preserve my life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek out your decrees. Your compassion, Lord, is great. Preserve my life according to your laws. Many are the foes who persecute me, but I have not turned from your statutes. Look on the faithless with loathing, for they do not obey your word. See how I love your precepts. Preserve my life, Lord, in accordance with your love. All your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. Rulers persecute me without cause, but my heart trembles at your word. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. I hate and detest falsehood but I love your law. 
Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. I wait for your salvation, Lord, and I follow your commands. I obey your statutes, for I love them greatly. I obey your precepts and your statutes, for all my ways are known to you. May my cry come before you, Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. May my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. May my lips overflow with praise, for you teach me your decrees. May my tongue sing of your word, for all your commands are righteous. May your hands be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, Lord, and your laws give me delight. Let me live that I may praise you, and may your laws sustain me. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The first of our two readings comes from the Old Testament, the book of Job, and we are reading chapter 3. Job speaks. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. He said, May the day of my birth perish, and the night that said, A boy is conceived. That day may it turn to darkness. May God above not care about it. May no light shine on it. May gloom and utter darkness claim it once more. May a cloud settle over it. May blackness overwhelm it. That night may thick darkness seize it. May it not be included among the days of the year, nor be entered in any of the months. May that night be barren. May no shout of joy be heard in it, and may those who curse days curse that day. May those who are ready to rouse Leviathan, may its its morning stars become dark. May it wait for daylight in vain, and not see the first days of dawn. For it did not shut the doors of the womb on me to hide from my troubled eyes. Why did I not perish at birth and die as I came from the womb? Why were there knees to receive me and breasts that I may be nursed? For now I would be lying down in peace. I would be asleep and at rest with kings and rulers of the earth who built for themselves places now lying in ruins, with princes who had gold who filled their houses with silver. Why was I not hidden away in the ground like a stillborn child, like an infant who never saw the light of day? There the wicked cease from turmoil, and there the weary are at rest. Captives also enjoy their ease. They no longer hear the slave drivers shout. The small and great are there, and slaves are freed from their owners. Why is light given to those in misery and life to the bitter of soul? To those who long for death, that does not come, who search for it more than hidden treasure, who are filled with gladness and rejoice when they reach the grave. Why is life given to a man whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in? For sighing has become my daily food, my groans pour out like water. What I feared has come upon me, what I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness, I have no rest, but only turmoil. Her second reading, which I hope is a bit more cheerful, comes from Romans chapter 2. And we are reading verses 1 to 16. That's Romans chapter 2, verses 1 to 16. God's righteous judgment. You therefore have no excuse. You who pass judgment on somewhere else, someone else, for whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere human being, pass judgment on them, and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance and patience, not realising that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. 
But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done. To those who by persistence in good, in good seek glory, honour and immorality, immortality, sorry I'm struggling this morning, honour and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honour and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. For God does not show favouritism. All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them, and at other times even defending them. This will take place on the day when God judges people's secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A little dosy do there, swapping places. <laughs> you missed it, it was off camera. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, help us to understand the depth of your mercy, that we may show mercy. Amen. I've always said, if you get the prayer, you get the sermon, so. <laughs> 16 verses of Romans. Um, pretty much every preacher would tell you that's 15 verses more than you need for a sermon. Um, we're going to try and do a little bit of verses 1 to 4, because, as you know, Romans is so dense with theology, we probably can't do the whole 16 verses justice. So what is Paul talking about? Paul is talking about not judging others. I think that's fairly plain. And he says clearly that if you judge others, you will be judged. And I like to think of this as um, an image, which helps me, of having two choices. If you can imagine a large courthouse or palace, and it's a big open space, and there's a throne, and you have two choices. You can stay on the floor in the place of mercy, or you can sit on the chair in the place of judgment. <laughs> You can say, I'm standing in judgment, or you can say, I understand that I need the mercy myself, and so I'm going to stay here. And it's clear that we cannot do degrees. We cannot say, well, I'm going to judge that person's finances because my finances are slightly better. Unless you have been absolutely perfect in that area, and never once fudged anything, you are not in a position to judge. You might say, well, I run my family better, or I'm a better Christian. In each case, unless you are completely perfect, I strongly recommend to myself and to you that we get off the throne and go and stand on the floor and receive God's mercy in that place of mercy. Now, I know we all have frustrations, and I'm not saying we never get to um, voice our frustrations, but there is a big difference between that and deciding that another person should receive our judgment. It may be that sometimes as we voice our frustrations, we're headed for the throne, mm -hmm. <laughs> And then we remember to stop and turn back and stay on the floor. Or occasionally we might find ourselves sitting on it and let's hopefully we have the grace to get back down and let God get back on that throne. 
And the Bible reinforces this in many places. We are going to pray the Lord's Prayer this morning. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. As with, that's terrifying, and yet we pray it every service. You know, we, for, we are forgiven as we forgive. Put yourself back down on the floor. Remember that you are also, I am also in need of mercy. I am simply another person in need of mercy. I love that when we have communion, not now, regrettably, as I have to come to you, we all kneel in the same place. We're all the same before God. And Jesus, again, not only tells us this truth when he teaches us how to pray, but he tells this truth in a number of parables, but I think particularly of the one where the king wants to settle accounts with his servants. And he brings the man in who owes a lot, and the man pleads for mercy, and the king forgives him. And then the servant goes straight out, do you remember? And tries to extort money from the people who owe him money. He doesn't extend that mercy to others, and it doesn't end well for him. We stay in the place of mercy. We do not put ourselves on the throne, not just because we do not want to put ourselves under judgment, and sitting on the throne in judgment puts us under judgment, but because we remember the riches of his kindness. This is verse four of the four verses we're looking at. If you do judge, do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is extended to you to lead you to repentance? I find at any point where I remember that I am forgiven, (laughs) when I am so aware of the mercy shown to me, it is much easier to show mercy to others. I think we dare not ask God to show us the extent of the mercy he has shown us over life. It is probably more than we can stand. I tend to think that he will show us that as we enter heaven. We will see the fullness, the richness, the breadth of the forgiveness that he has given us. There is a beautiful image in the Christmas carol, if you like this image as well, and it's probably not an image you think of. We know many of the familiar images in the Christmas carol of the ghosts of Christmas past and Christmas yet to come, but there's a tiny little sentence at the beginning which I've always found so helpful, and it's Scrooge's nephew in response to the bar humbug speech, and he says of Christmas, It is the season when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut up hearts freely and to think of people, other people, as if they were fellow passengers to the grave and not another race of creatures bound on another journey. I love that image. It makes me think sometimes of the things we see on news, of of, of mass migrations, of refugees. We are on the same journey We start with birth, we end with death, we take nothing with us. Are we going to try and shove others out of the way on that path or condemn the way they are acting? Or are we going to walk that path from birth to death, stopping, helping those who have stumbled, being patient, not putting our need to rush ahead before them, knowing that we are all on the same road. We are all in that same courtyard, in that same place of mercy. And if neither of those images are helpful, there are plenty of lovely memes if you are a a social media person. Be kind. You don't know what battles others are facing. We don't know. Verse 2 of our four little verses said, God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. None of us know the whole of another person's truth. None of us know what burdens they are bearing. None of us know what history has brought them to this place. None of us know how else they are suffering. So I exhort myself and all of us, judge not Show mercy. Amen.
Thank you, Katie. I've always said to my grandchildren, if you do unto others as you would have them do unto you, you won't hurt anybody, because you don't want to be hurt, do you? Hmm, you see that, Nanny? That puts it in a nutshell, and it works. We're going to continue our service on page six. If you have a green book, we're going to say the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people to set them free, who has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. <coughs> Let's declare our faith. Let's say the creed, the Nicene Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Holy Spirit, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's continue in prayer as we pray for the church and for the world and thank God for his goodness. Loving Father, we pray for your church and all our fellow Christians throughout the world. We thank you for our fellowship here at St Mary's and for sending the Holy Spirit to strengthen and encourage us in all we do. Thank you for this building and all that's being done to make it a more welcoming place to be. Thank you for the planned work to create a community space so that our neighbours in the surrounding area will be able to enjoy time here. Being close to your church, Father, may they be filled with a desire to join us in this fellowship. For your world, Father, we thank you for all the wonders it holds. We thank you that here in the UK we are controlling the coronavirus and at last beginning to see a return to a more comfortable way of life. We do lift to you all those areas where this is not the case. We pray that more can be done to accelerate vaccination and care wherever it is needed. We also lift to you areas where there is conflict and war, fear and unrest. We pray for all who can have any influence in all these situations that they will find a way through. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and peace that they may honour one another and seek the common good. Loving Father, we pray for our families, friends and neighbours, all those with whom we come into daily contact. Father, now that we're able to mix more with one another, we pray that people will be careful and caring in that contact, that the present rules will be adhered to, and where there needs to be greater care for the common good, we will be able to understand and be patient. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We lift you all in special need. Today, those still suffering from COVID and some with the long-term effects, for the sick in mind or body, for the weary, the lonely and the bereaved. We lift you to do those suffering financially without work and those who have so much to do 
they don't have enough hours in the day. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now gathering our prayers and praises into one, we'll say together the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Notices? Uh, the church will be open for personal prayer today between 12 and 2 and 6 and 8 p.m. Uh, Friday, if it's not pouring with rain, uh, the community choir will be meeting. We're also having our turf delivered to finish the garden at the back, and uh, Godspeed will be meeting. Saturday morning, there's a meeting for Ignite at, I haven't put a time down, 9.30 in the hall. Yes? Lovely, sorry. And uh, this Sunday, our services are 9.30, 11 and 3 p.m. And those will be communion services. Just to give you forewarning that at the moment, um, we will be continuing this service through till August. Um, we will then uh, revisit whether we can have the Wednesday service in person, but that will probably be in September. We'll take a break in August from our Wednesday services. We are also still uh, awaiting guidance as to um, whether we can sing in church, um, what else we can do as of the June 21st deadline. So the first Sunday after that will be June 27th. We will be going back to two services on a Sunday, but we will continue to keep you posted and uh, let you know every time there are notices. So, uh, and do check our um, website and notice boards. We will keep those updated as well. Thank you. I don't know whether it's exciting or worrying, all these changes. We got so used to just being, just being, now we've all got to get going again. I'm sure the Lord will help us. <laughs> Let's finish our service and leave with God's blessing. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in life eternal. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.